Hey, it's Ben here, and here in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna have a look at how we create this countdown timer. We're gonna be using only the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro to do this, using some of the shape tools, transitions, and some of the generators in Final Cut Pro to create this. It's a timer that you can use in a number of different formats. So once you've created it, you could use it in 1080p project like this, but you could just as quickly kind of copy and paste it, transform it, or if you want, move it around to different spots in your video really easily within Final Cut Pro. So it's a nice portable timer that you can use in different ways. And it's really quite simple to set up in Final Cut Pro. So let's get started. We're gonna start on a brand new blank timeline. So the first thing we're gonna do is come to Window, Workspaces, and we're gonna set the default workspace. And that just means we're all looking at the same screen. So we have our video here, of this person doing some push-ups. We'll turn off the transform controls here for the moment. And basically, we're gonna create a timer in this space here. So we're gonna come up to the top left of our screen. Here we're gonna come into the titles and generators. And what we're looking for in here is our basic shapes. So if we scroll all the way down, you can see we have our elements. And in here, you can find the counting object, which we're gonna use, and then also the shape. So these are really the two main generators we're going to use. So we're going to drag this circle down to the timeline and we'll stretch this out so it fills our whole timeline. And basically we're going to be using this circle, we're going to turn off the fill. So we'll come to our inspector at the top right, we'll select our generator options here and we'll uncheck the fill. You can see you can also use a square, diamond, other different shapes in this way as well. And in particular for the square, you can use this same technique to make a square draw itself onto screen as well. So we're gonna use a circle and we're gonna leave most of these settings the same. We're just gonna change the outline width so that it's a little bit thicker. And that's just really so we can more easily kind of see it on screen. We're gonna leave the countdown timer in the center here as we work with it, although we can move the circle around if we need to. Just undo that. So in order to draw the circle on, we're gonna be using a transition. We'll come down to our transitions at the bottom right. And in here, we're gonna scroll down and we're looking for these wipes. So in here, we're using the clock wipe to get the circle to draw itself on. So we're gonna drag this onto our clip. And basically, we're gonna create a 20 second countdown timer. So we want this transition to be 20 seconds long. So I'm just gonna do Shift and Z. So we can fit the whole sequence to the screen. And you can see we've got a 22 second long sequence here. So first of all, we're gonna delete the transition from the end of our clip. We don't need it. We'll come to the beginning and then I can either stretch this out to exactly 20 seconds or if I highlight it, hold down the control key and tap D, then that's going to highlight my duration in the middle here. So I can type in 20 period and hit enter and that will make my transition 20 seconds long. So now that we have our transition set to 20 seconds, you can see we play it back, it's going to slowly draw on and we've got a couple of things we're going to change here so at the moment we've got this blurred edge to our circle as it draws on we're going to change that up in the inspector so with our transition selected come to the inspector we're going to just have a look at the edge treatment here so clicking this little arrow and we are going to turn down the feather to zero so we get a nice hard edge there we can do that here as well with our on-screen controllers and we can also change where the circle is gonna start. So I'm just gonna slide it up here so it's gonna start right up at the top. So we've got it at 90 degrees, basically. So if we come back to the beginning, you can see our circle is gonna draw on over that 20 second period. And now we just need to add our countdown numbers in the middle there. So to add our numbers in here, we're gonna come back up to our titles of generators here. And in our elements, we have the, the counting option. We'll drag this down to the timeline and we'll make this 20 seconds long as well. So it matches the duration of our transition. You can see I've got snapping turned on here on the right. So it's gonna snap right to the end of this transition here. So with this selected, we're gonna to come to the inspector and basically our start number is going to be 20 and our end number is going to be zero. So we'll enter both those. 
So you can see now when we press play, our 20 second countdown timer is going to time perfectly with our red circle drawing on. Now we just need to modify a couple things here for our number. So we're going to come up to the inspector again. We are going to change our type here to Helvetica, which is a good typeface that works with these numbers. So we're going to choose Helvetica Noi, and we're going to make that condensed black. And then in here, we can change the color of our number as well. So we'll pick out a different color from here. Let's go for a nice yellow. And then we can also change the number of digits there as well. So our minimum number of digits, we're just going to roll that right back down to one. So we get it counting down from 20. We don't get the, the zero in front of the single numbers when we get down to these numbers. In the countdown timer, you can't change the size of the type. So we'll need to come to the video options here. I'm going to come towards the end of my countdown here and we're going to use the scale and transform properties up in inspector to increase the size of this. So I'm basically going to increase the size of my number so it's nice and big and then I'm just going to use the X and Y offsets here to just move that into the middle of that red circle. And what we need to do here is just check that our double digits work just as well. So we're just going to quickly scan through here and that looks reasonably well aligned all the way down. So now that that's all set up, let's play this through. And that is looking pretty good. So we do wanna change a couple things here. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is just change this transition into a compound clip. So I'm gonna select my clip and my transition here and do Option and G which is going to make that into a compound clip. And then I'm going to copy my numbers here. So Command and C, and then double click into that compound clip. For some reason, getting the transition and the number countdown to group into a compound clip together didn't work for me. So I had to kind of do this method. So now I'm going to paste this in, it's going to paste on a layer above. And now if we go back and delete the numbers here, we have those in our compound clip. The nice thing about this now is that we can move this around. So we can find a spot here in the middle of our video, grab our transform tools. We can change the scale of both the number and the clip. And we can move that around. It's a little bit smaller than I had in the example. And that is looking pretty good. So we'll come to the zero here. And basically what we're gonna do here is select this clip, place our playhead on the zero, and do Shift and H, which is gonna give us a hold frame. And that means we can hold on zero all the way to the end of our video. And then I'm gonna use Option, or Alt, and the right square bracket to trim that down. We'll click away from everything and we'll play this through. So you can see we've got a nice clip there that we can use and reuse within different projects. We can resize it. And this is a really nice use of the built-in tools within Final Cut Pro. So I hope that is useful if you are looking to set up a countdown timer or just to simply animate on a circle. These tools within Final Cut Pro can be applied to a number of different scenarios and if you have any questions then please do leave them in the comments below otherwise I look forward to seeing you on the next video.